Welcome back to Sports by GSMC Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jeremy Lapidus. Today is Friday, October 18th. If you are just tuning in, we just went over the Week 7 game picks for the NFL. In this segment, we turn our attention to college football. Week 8 has some massive matchups, not quite as many as last week, but still a bunch of really good games to take a look at. One tonight, 14 tomorrow that I want to take a look at. We will break down all of those games, potential scores, and what I think will happen as well. But before we do that, remember... If you would like to be an even bigger part of the show than you already are, all you need to do is go to gsmcpodcast.net. Or, if you are on YouTube, you can use that Super Chat feature. If you do either of those two things, a message should pop up on the bottom of the screen for you, me, and everybody else around the world to see. If you do have a burning question about sports, anything at all that you would like to ask, go and throw that in the comments. Throw it in the chat. I will get to it as soon as I possibly can. I appreciate everybody so much for sticking around, talking some sports with me here on a beautiful Friday, October 18th. But like I was saying, in this segment, we turn our attention to college football, another stacked slate here in Week 8, including one with a lot of Big 12 uh, potential uh, tonight as the number 13 BYU Cougars host Oklahoma State, an Oklahoma State team that has a lot of promise, an Oklahoma State team that you know should be one of the top contenders in the Big 12, but they have not been able to get the run game going. The defense has been incredibly inconsistent. BYU, on the other hand, favored by 8.5 points in this one at home, has turned the other teams over a lot. And Oklahoma State has not been immune to turning the ball over. They've played plenty of sloppy games. I don't know if this one will be much different. BYU has played really good football. There's a reason that they're number 13 in the country. They have a real chance at staying undefeated and winning that Big 12 title. We will see, though. I think they continue their run, though. <gasps> Win 41-27 to tonight. Getting to Saturday. I want to kick off with a group of five game, a Sunbelt matchup as James Madison University, favored by nine and a half points, travel to Georgia Southern, a Georgia Southern team that I think is getting really disrespected in this matchup. Georgia Southern has only lost two games all season, and while you might write off a group of five team that has two losses, completely understandable, you have to look at who Georgia Southern has lost to. They lost their first game in a back-and-forth matchup with Ashton Genty, the Heisman favorite, and Boise State. Their second loss is to Ole Miss. That is two top 25 losses. That is a very, very quality schedule right there. They are they are 10-point underdogs to James Madison. And while I don't necessarily think they're going to win, I think this Georgia Southern team is being respected, disrespected. I think 9.5 points is way too big for a JMU team that can lose its way. We saw it against ULM. They ended up losing that game. They made a, bad, a bunch of bad coaching decisions against Gardner-Webb earlier in the season. Their offense sputtered. Now, the offense has been really good for the Dukes for most of this season, but still, Georgia Southern is a high-powered, high-octane team that I think can keep pace with them. I think JMU gets the win, but only by 3, 33-30. Then we get a fun one. Number six, Miami. The Hurricanes favored by five as they travel to Kentucky to take on Louisville. Louisville has lost two straight games. They lost to two top 25 teams, though. They lost to a Notre Dame team by seven that, in my personal rankings, is in the top 12. They lost to an SMU team that is in the top 25. That's two straight quality losses where they stayed competitive, and I think they're getting a little bit underrated in this one. Miami has just survived two straight scares. They should have probably lost the last two games, having to come back from 25 against a not-ranked Cal, survive a near-Hail Mary attempt from Virginia Tech, also not ranked. I think I think Louisville gets this win, 38-35. to 35. This should be a fun one, and with the way that Miami Magic has been going, I think they, they maybe they find a way to pull this off, but I'm on Louisville's side in this one. I think Miami gets, up, gets dealt their first loss of the season to the Cardinals on the road. 
Then we have Nebraska taking on undefeated number 16, Indiana. Kurt Signetti has come in and turned that program around. They haven't been this good in forever. They're favored by six and a half points at home. Dylan Raiola has gotten that offense going pretty solidly, but we've also seen them struggle against teams like Rutgers, a Rutgers team that just got blown out by Wisconsin. And I think Indiana is much better than that. Their defense, probably not as good as Rutgers, but their offense, much, much better. And you can't have performances like that and then turn around and try and play a really good team like Indiana. I think Indiana wins pretty comfortably 30 to 21. Then we have one of the biggest matchups of the week as number seven, Alabama, favored by three points, travels to to suit the Tennessee Volunteers in Knoxville, a massive, massive matchup for them. This is a huge game for both of these teams, a must win for both of these teams. Whoever loses this game, in my opinion, is out of the playoffs. They've both lost games already, and if they lose this one, they can't, they probably won't make the SEC championship game. And without that, I think there's I think there's eight, eight better teams out there in the country better than one of these two, whoever loses this one. That being said, the winner of this game gets a huge boost, probably stamps their ticket to the playoffs. Now, none of this is guaranteed. This is still a must-win game for both of them. In Tennessee, I think Tennessee, slight advantage for home for home field, but still, the way, the way both of these teams have been playing leaves a lot to be desired. Alabama loses to Vanderbilt. Then they almost lose to South Carolina, probably should have lost to South Carolina. Tennessee loses to Arkansas in because Arkansas just casts a chaos spell for some reason. But their offense has a little been a little bit concerning. I'm leaning with Alabama in this one, but I do think this one could go either way. I'm leaning Alabama 24 to 20. Another ranked matchup at least in the AP poll, I don't think either of these teams should be ranked, but it still should be a fun one as number 24 Michigan travels to Illinois in a Big Ten battle. Number 22 Illinois hosts the Wolverines. The Wolverines favored by three and a half in this one. This is going to be an ugly one. Michigan, they run the ball. Illinois, they can keep pace, but their run defense hasn't been the best. Because of that, I'm picking Michigan in this one. They win 20 to 17. Then a fun one. Maybe the opposite. Not much of a slugfest like this Illinois-Michigan game will be. Colorado and Travis Hunter travel to Arizona, who's favored by two and a half in this one. This should be a fun game. Noah Fifita and that Arizona offense are really good. Both of these teams are built very similarly, and I think Travis Hunter versus T-Mac is going to be an awesome battle. I'm leaning Colorado in this one. I think the way that Shadur Sanders is playing and Travis Hunter is playing right now is going to push them over the top. I think they win 31 to 24. Then we get to Chaos Field. Arkansas hosting number eight LSU. LSU coming off of a massive win against Ole Miss. I don't think LSU is really all that. I think they're a very good team. But they're walking into Arkansas. And like I say, every time Arkansas steps on the field... It's just chaos incarnate, especially on the road. I think they got a crazy chaos win over Tennessee. And I don't think that Garrett Nussmeyer, who's been inconsistent, is going to be able to nullify that chaos. I think Arkansas gets another one of those chaotic wins. They win 28 to 27. Kansas State, number 17 in the nation, travels to West Virginia in a big tw- another Big 12 battle. Kansas State, a lot of people really do like. I'm fading them a little bit because I don't like how inconsistent I've seen them be. They got lucky. I don't think they win that game against Colorado if Colorado is healthy. I haven't seen the best Kansas State performances out there. A lot of their wins aren't aging as well as as you'd think they would, and they got killed by BYU. I don't think West Virginia has anything like that, but I do think West Virginia is a dangerous team, and I'm picking another upset here. I'm taking West Virginia to win this one at home, 30-28. to 28. Kentucky, one-and-a-half-point favorites, travel to Florida. I'm not going to spend too long on this one. I don't think Florida's a very good team. I think Kentucky's defense should be able to shut them down pretty easily. They win 23-15. to 15. Number 12, Notre Dame. Nine and a half point favorites traveling to Georgia Tech. This is going to be a big battle for them. We've seen 
uh, we've seen Notre Dame really improve since they got their since they got their loss to Northern Illinois. They played really good football. Their offense has been playing really good football, especially since that loss. I don't expect that to stop now against the Georgia Tech defense that is not very good, although Georgia Tech could put up some points against this team. We saw the way that Northern Illinois attacked them. I think Georgia Tech is built to attack them the same way. I think Notre Dame wins 41-24. to South Carolina favored by one point traveling to Oklahoma. Oklahoma just got killed in the Red River rivalry. We saw South Carolina nearly beat, probably should have beat Alabama, but I think Oklahoma is still a better team. South Carolina favored by one in this game, and I'm taking the upset in this one. Oklahoma's defense, I still think, is really, really good. That offense needs some work, but I don't think South Carolina is going to be able to pull off some magic twice in a row. I think Oklahoma wins this 28 to 23 three games left we got the big one at the end georgia texas arizona state traveling to cincinnati so this doesn't seem like a big game but cincinnati is favored by five and a half points in this one and after what we saw arizona state pull off their run game is deadly we've seen Cincinnati blow huge leads to teams like Pitt, and I think Arizona State is on the same level as Pitt in this one. I think Arizona State clears Cincinnati pretty easily, winning 33-18. to Then another SEC battle before we get to the SEC battle as Auburn, probably the punching bag this year of the SEC, travels to number 19 Missouri, who's favored by four points in this one. This game should be a lot of fun. Missouri had a huge bounce back week after taking that loss to Texas A&M. I think Auburn's going to put up a fight, though. I think Missouri still wins 30-24. to And then we get the game of the week. As number one Texas, favored by four and a half hosts, number five Georgia. This is going to be awesome. This is going to be must-watch TV on Saturday. You get title contenders, the two, arguably the two juggernauts currently of the sport, going head-to-head in their first SEC matchup, Texas hosts. Texas is the number one team in the nation. They've separated themselves pretty clearly from everybody else, at least in my opinion, and I think Georgia will put up a fight. I think Georgia absolutely can and will put up a fight. They have the offensive personnel. They have the defense to do it. But I don't think they're going to be able to put to, to beat Texas. I think they're going to put them through the biggest test that they've had, much closer than Oklahoma was able to. But I still think that Texas wins handily enough, 30 to 24. But let me know what you think. I'd love to hear your thoughts on any of these games. I hope everybody enjoys what's going to be an awesome sports weekend. All of these NFL and college games that we went over, MLB playoffs continue to happen. The WNBA Finals, they have a potential elimination game tonight. Lots of awesome stuff to watch. And of course, the NHL as well. We'll be back on Monday talking all of everything that happened today, tomorrow, and the next day, as well as preparing you for Monday Night Football. Hope I will see you there then. You all have a good one. Bye-bye.